Hello there, this is John V, software evangelist at Jscape, and you're watching a Jscape MFT server tutorial. In this video, we're going to share with you a method that can significantly reduce the steps you normally take in applying file transfer automation to certain business processes. Here, you'll learn how to gather remote host credentials into a single entity, which you can later on reuse every time you need to construct another automated process. First, let me explain the problem. Let's say you carry out transactions with a trading partner through the SFTP protocol. Whenever you establish an SFTP connection with a trading partner, you need to specify a set of credentials that will allow you access to that trading partner's SFTP service. These credentials may include pertinent information such as your trading partner's hostname or IP address, the port number, username, password, a client key, a host key, and so on. That won't be a problem if you only perform one type of transaction with your trading partner. However, in real-world scenarios, two trading partners will most likely need to engage in several business processes. For instance, you might need an SFTP file transfer for transmitting a quote request, another for a quote response, another for a purchase order, yet another for a PO acknowledgement, and so on. Even if all these transactions will require the same set of SFTP connection credentials, you'll still need to enter these credentials every time you try to automate a particular transaction. That's when the problems begin. Not only can constant entering of credentials be time-consuming, it can also lead to human errors. But that's not all. What if your trading partner later on decides to change one or more credentials? You'll have to go into every single transaction that uses that SFTP connection and change the credentials there. Again, this can be tedious and prone to errors. Here's a better way. Let me introduce you to the Jscape MFT Server solution. In Jscape MFT Server, you can define an entity that's also called a trading partner. A single trading partner can consist of all the necessary attributes for connecting to a trading partner's file transfer service. For instance, a trading partner for an SFTP service would again consist of a hostname or IP address, a port number, a username, password, a client key, a host key, and so on. The advantage of using trading partners is that every time you set up an automated file transfer that requires the credentials and connection settings you've already assigned to a trading partner, you simply call that trading partner into play. What if your trading partner changes a credential for that particular SFTP service? All you need to do is edit the trading partner and enter the credential that was changed. It's done in a single place instead of on every transaction. It's simple, fast, and significantly brings down chances of human errors. Does it sound like something you could use? Here's how you set things up on Jscape MFT Server. Note that I'm going to assume both you and your trading partner already have an SFTP service running on your servers. If you don't have those yet, I suggest you read the post setting up an SFTP service or watch the corresponding video. I've included links to those pieces of content in the description. The first step is to add a new trading partner. Launch the Jscape MFT Server Manager and go to the Trading Partners module. Click Add to add a new trading partner. Next, expand the drop-down list and select SFTP slash SCP for your trading partner's file transfer protocol. If you've noticed, there are several trading partner file transfer protocols to choose from. The next step is to enter the required parameters of the SFTP connection. This is where you specify all parameters pertinent to this particular trading partner. Because this example involves an SFTP connection, notice that you may even strengthen your authentication processes by employing a client key and a host key. Once you've entered everything you need, click the test server to test your connection. If it turns out fine, click the OK button. You should then see your newly created trading partner in your list of trading partners. Every time you need to test or edit a trading partner's connection settings and credentials, just go here. Let me now show you some of the trigger actions where you can use your trading partner objects. 
trigger actions are elements of Jscape MFD server's powerful automation enabling feature known as triggers. A discussion on triggers is beyond the scope of this article, but it's really something you should allocate some time to. We already have an extensive collection of articles on triggers, and I've included a link to those in the description. I've also included a link to a YouTube video describing what they are and how to use them. In the meantime, let's finish off this tutorial. First, let's take a look at an SFTP file transfer upload trigger action that doesn't use trading partners. Notice that you need to enter connection credentials. If you need to do an SFTP file transfer download action to retrieve a document, you need to enter the same set of credentials. You'll probably need several of these upload and download actions for your other transactions with the same trading partner. So you'll need to enter the same set of connection credentials to those trigger actions as well. Now let's look at a trigger action that uses a trading partner. This is the trading partner file upload action. Notice how in order to specify settings for your SFTP connection, all you need to do is select the trading partner in question from the partner dropdown list. There's no need to enter IP addresses, usernames, passwords, etc. Imagine just doing this for every single action. That's it. Now you know how to use trading partners on JSCAP.